President Obama said progress was made in a meeting yesterday on raising the debt ceiling and slashing the deficit. Sunday, the hard bargaining picks up again at the White House. With more on the magic numbers involved, we bring in Stuart Eisenstadt. He's a former Deputy Treasury Secretary under Bill Clinton. He's joining us now on the phone from D.C. Stu, thanks for joining us this morning. Before we get to the longer-term question of the deficit, in an exclusive interview, Nancy Pelosi told our own Peter Cook there's no chance that the U.S. will hit the debt ceiling and start defaulting on its debts. Are you in agreement with the minority leader? I am, because I think one outcome of the meeting at the White House yesterday was a clear understanding by the leaders of both political parties that it would be an absolutely unacceptable economic risk to the United States and to our standing in the world if we exceeded that debt limit and began to be unable to pay our obligations. So I think that's one clear... So everyone's in agreement on that point? Yes. Okay, well, let's get to the longer term issues now. President Obama, congressional leaders working towards this sweeping bargain, right? The idea here to cut the deficit by $4 trillion over more than 10 years. Can they meet that number, honestly, that $4 trillion figure? I think they're going to. What has happened is that the dynamic has changed. They spent weeks fruitlessly trying to reach a $2 trillion deal as a result of uh, which they would raise the debt limit by a comparable amount. And with all that pain, you would not reduce the spiraling trajectory of debt in the 21st century. You just stay even. And with an aging society and soaring and unsustainable health care costs, we simply would have exacted a lot of pain without that much gain. So the president took a remarkably bold and politically risky step. I would call it the domestic equivalent of the daring raid to kill Osama bin Laden by essentially reverting to the recommendations of his own bipartisan deficit reduction commission, the Simpson-Bowles Commission, putting entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid on the table for the first time in order to induce Republicans to consider a tax reform package that would close loopholes, tax incentives, subsidies, and deductions, and raise a trillion dollars in revenue but over the next Stu, 10 years. So it's a huge political bargain if it works on both sides with great political and economic consequences. Well, you just pointed out really what the challenges are. We know liberal Democrats are furious, right, that the president has opened the door to those changes. You just alluded to Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. And on the other side, Republicans seem as if they're continuing to resist tax increases. You know the workings of Washington well. Where is the compromise going to be? Well, the compromise is going to be that both sides are going to have to make very painful choices with respect to their base. For Democrats, it means taking away the political advantage of running against Republicans on Medicare, the Ryan budget, the special election in New York where uh, Democrats won in a Republican seat, and threatening their liberal base. But for Republicans, it means, in effect, going against their orthodoxy, their no-tax pledge, uh, risking the Tea Party's alienation by, in effect, raising revenues. Now, that can be done by lowering rates, because if you close loopholes and tax incentives, subsidies and deductions, you can significantly reduce rates. And that's the basis upon which the Republican leadership will argue they haven't backed away Stu, from their no-tax pledge. While we're on taxes, I just want to ask you this, because it's something that affects a lot of Americans, this proposal being discussed that would permanently change the alternative minimum tax, the idea being it won't hit millions of middle-income Americans. Do you think that is likely to change? Well, we've gone year after year after year, Deidre, uh, basically adjusting the alternative minimum tax. It gets more and more expensive. So I think there's a willingness now to simply tackle this directly. It's been costing $60, $70 billion a year, and all it does is postpone till the next year the alternative minimum tax. So I think by this grand bargain, which follows, again, the Bipartisan Deficit Reduction Commission, you don't need to have that adjustment. You're lowering rates, you're closing loopholes, and you avoid this annual rollover on the alternative minimum tax. Now, the personal dynamics here are fascinating. I think that the president's personal relationship with Speaker Boehner, which he's cultivated by uh, everything from golf course uh, trips to private meetings, may be the real key 
But also there's another political dynamic. This could be Tim Geithner's swan song. I served with Tim when I was deputy and he was undersecretary. Gene Sperling, who I also served with, was head of the National Economic Council and the Clinton administration is again. These are two people who helped bring us a budget surplus. This would be a great legacy for them and, and for the president, and I think ultimately for the country. So with all the politics and all the huge political risks, it would show the world that a dysfunctional political system can work and that Winston Churchill was right. Americans always do the right thing after they've exhausted every other alternative. <laughs> Stu, really quickly then, you could see Geithner leaving after this issue is resolved? Uh, I think Tim wants to get back uh, home to his family. He's served for uh, really more than a decade in public service. Uh, but this would be a wonderful way for him to uh, to depart with uh, this under his belt. And, and for the president, it would be really a historic uh, effort. Uh, if you think of the Reagan 1986 uh, agreement on taxes and tax reform with uh, then Speaker Tip O'Neill, that was only one piece of it. This would take that, it would duplicate it for 2011 on the tax side, but it would add three trillion dollars of reductions in, in spending. That would be very difficult for de Democrats, I think, to swallow. But at the end of the day, I think they'll be rewarded by the fact that they were willing to reduce an unsustainable debt. Okay. We clearly are on an unsustainable path, and I think by showing okay. a willingness to put this grand compromise down, it will benefit the country and ultimately the, the people who are willing to agree to this. I think Stu. people will recognize this was a bold political move. And Stu, I okay, we have to leave it there. I'm sorry. Stu Eisenstadt joining us there, former Deputy Treasury Secretary, saying that this deficit plan could be Tim Geithner's swan song.